Commoners, Nacho, nice welcome back to the channel. And the trailer for Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon Part 2 The Scar Giver is out. And after watching it a couple times, I think I figured yeah, out what Saki Boy is trying to tell us. I know that I haven't been uploading lately. Sorry, there's a lot of things going on in my life right now. And let's be honest, the only interesting things happening at the moment are Shogun, which I am making a video about, and the People vs. Sweet Baby Inc. and everything that entails for the gaming industry. But I will try to get back to my regular uploads. Now, back to our normal programming. Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon Part 2 The Scar Giver, I am not gonna say the whole title every time, carries on from the very open cliffhanger in Part 1 after bum rushing a 3 hour movie into 2 and leaving me with absolutely no clue what sort of drugs Saki Boy was on when he wrote this. But let's go over the trailer of Part 2. Right off rip, I know that I'm the target audience for this movie, cause I love nothing more than to see a cute, slightly toned woman taking on a full squad of heavily geared, grown ass men that are twice her size, that is not an innuendo by the way, with nothing else but a pistol. One of them had a flaming sword, I mean an incandescent machete, I can't say lightsaber, cause otherwise Disney is gonna copyright this video, that he swings at her like a bat, like he's not even trying to hit her. And again, she kills them one by one as they go face first towards her shots without making the effort of shooting their guns at her general direction or even lining up and collectively fire against this unarmored girl who's doing roly polies in front of them. No, they just get one tap in the face and stab with their own flaming no, sword. Truly an action masterpiece. Their nightmare is you and I fighting together. Well, one of them is apparently an unkillable murder bot voiced by Anthony Hopkins going through an identity crisis. The other one is a 5 foot 5, 54 kilogram hip hop dancer from oh Night back. Woman with a bowl cut. I'll let you choose which one to be afraid of. You're all here. Yes, Jimon Honsu, we know that we are here. Legendary commander stuff right there. No wonder you are depressed. Sir, we are surrounded. We need orders. The enemy is there. We are here. Fucking leaves and becomes a gladiator. We will teach you how to fight. That's impressive. You see, my problem with this whole setup is that, sure, you can give the cute water girl a boomstick and she will blow up a target made of hay. But when you are facing a planet destroyer dreadnought class starship that can fire nukes from space, you're gonna need something with a little bit more kick other than horses and that one hot dude's chiseled abs. The we will teach you how to fight however feels extremely short lived when the very next scene is Ajax jumping straight up into the enemy trenches and killing everyone in his path effortlessly. And you know this trailer is epic when there's not only one but two superhero landings in the span of 10 seconds. Superhero landing. Someone needs to fire this movie's hairdresser. Good God, man, the bowl cuts are making a comeback. So the music picks up and we start seeing all the flashes of the multiple fights that are gonna happen in this movie. Oh look, there's Katana. This is Katana. I mean Nemesis, the dual wielder master sword fighter that took out several high ranking officers and their security details in the last movie and the bad dudes try to take on her with swords. Not a great plan. All to retrieve the 60 kilogram soaking wet shoe blade lady from Kingsman. Oh hey, gender fluid militia chick is still here. How dirty did they do Blood Axe, man? They invested so much in that character only to kill him in the dumbest way possible and have this chick take his place. Fuck you. Yeah. So much is happening. What the fuck? At the start of the video, I said that I understood everything Saki Boy was trying to tell us with this film. I lied. I have no idea what the point of anything is. And if you're in the comments right now typing, Law is the plot of Seven Samurai, idiot. Go fuck yourself, okay? Eat shit. Don't act like you understand anything of what's happening. The focus of this apparently is that little girl with healing abilities. If so, why did Sophia leave her in the first place? Who did she give a scar to? Why did she suddenly decide to cut her hair with a bowl? Where does Tara keep getting Griffiths from? Why are the space Nazis risking an entire destroyer to take down this one unprotected wooden village? Fucking gas the pricks and then pick up boss girl from the passed out bodies and then nuke the fuckers. Fight's over, we won. 
Bring on the tentacle porn. Why are you so complicated, Zack? How did this man went from making an epic, brilliant movie like 300 to failing miserably in making a Star Wars ripoff that's worse than anything Star Wars have put out lately? Part of everything, I am a storyteller and an activist. Shut the fuck up. The bar is set extremely low, Zack. I mean, The Acolyte just came out with a trailer with its all-female, black and white, this is not about good and evil type spiel. No offense, but it sounds like some fucking commie gobbledygook. <sighs> Which is getting ratioed out of existence. The comments are pretty funny though. And your trailer has a tenth of the likes. No one gives a shit. You might have noticed throughout this video that I haven't been using any of the characters' actual names. That is because I don't remember half of them. And I've watched this movie several times while making my previous video. Both director cuts are coming out on the same day during summer, meaning we are going to get 6 hours worth of this stuff we've pretty much already seen. Only difference is, it's going to be oh R-rated. My. my guess is though, we'll see a little bit more trout here and there. God forbid we see an actual breast in a sci-fi fantasy in 2024, and we're going to get a couple more fucks throw up here and there. Other than that, no one has any motivation to see this, Saki boy. This is not Lord of the Rings. No one wants to see more of what they care very little about. And it's a shame though, because in theory, you could get a lot done with this story. But much like the trailer, there's so much going on at the same time that you just lose track of it. Sofia Butella came out defending this film, saying that it was hard to endure the critical beating the film took when it arrived on Netflix last year. You are forgetting the fan beating it also took. It was Zack's passion project and he was too blinded to see that it actually didn't work. In his defense though, I love the makeup and costume design in this film, as well as some of the special effects. Lighting up a sword is not something revolutionary, but I like the concept of it being a standardized weapon that anyone in the universe has access to. But that's as far as compliments go, cause script wise, it seems like Zack wanted to bite a lot more than he could chew. Having one character with a complicated past that's running from his previous life only to be dragged back in by her feelings of justice is hard enough to put into a film, let alone when you have 8 of them. Two of them are dead though, so that makes it easier. But you also have to explain the entire evil empire they're fighting against, the half men half Ajax space Dario, the healing princess subplot, as well as the political machination of this Imperium of Men, the assassination of the royal family allegedly planned by the current region that despite having so much power, can't keep on conquering the universe unless his rebel daughter is brought back to him alive. Just kill everyone and bring her back as a cyborg, otherwise she's gonna continue escaping or she's gonna kill all of you with her thick ass plot armor. I mean. You can't shoot this chick. You can try, but you'll miss. And she'll flip you over with her 55 kilogram frame and drive a flaming sword through you. So the second part of Rebel Moon is coming up on the 12th of April. And I might make a review of it. If I remember, I have so much shit going on right now that I might just be at the beach trying to relax and completely forget that this movie series exists. But if you watch this fine too, it really is like. Check out this video next if you haven't watched the first part of Rebel Moon. I mean, what have you been doing with your life? Let me know in the comments down below if you're excited to see the Scar Giver or the 6 hour director's cut of this. Thank you to my supporters over at Coffee. Oh you guys my. are amazing. I love you. No homo. And as always, I've been Nacho. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.